Hi everyone, in this video I would like to talk about free translation plugins for WordPress that you can use. And if you're searching for some alternatives, the ones that I could recommend that are actually free are G-Translate, if you're looking for an automatic translation that it's free, or also Translate Press, where you can actually do manual translation. It's also for free, of course, both of those are freemiums, they offer more features with their paired versions. And as I have talked on other videos, the ones that I most recommend are Weglot. It's a really good plugin. It's fast to do the translations. They offer some free translation up to 2000 words. So that's the newcomer I can say convey this. It's another option that it's also really good and high quality translations. And the one that I use personally for my blog, WPML. So once you have downloaded, or you can just search here, you can just activate and you can go to settings. Here with G-Translate, you can modify the widget look. So it will appear as the different types that you can choose. Also here, we can select the original language of our website. So if we're translated mainly from German, from Italian, Japanese, Romanian, Turkish, and so on, we can select here the main original language. Another important aspect of international SEO, it's about the URL structure. It's recommended mainly in website like most. They recommend to use zip directories instead of subdomains. But in this case with G-Translate, you have to select the paid version. Also with some other plugins like WPML, it's already set from the very beginning. Also, if you want to do the auto switch to the browser's language. So this is the one recommended for the ones who are aiming to direct which language will be shown for the user. Here we can select where should the widget appear. So in this case, we will select the primary menu. Also here, if you want to have a floating button, you can select the location. Also, I will just select it. So just to show how it really shows. If you want to show the name in the late native language, this will change how it actually looks or in the main original language of the first one. Also the flag size, if you want smaller size, this is just a matter of styling also with the flag type. SVGs are more recommended for a better performance on the website and loading faster. And here we can be selecting the different languages that we want to do the translation to. Also, in case that there are some other languages that we want to select different flags, like for example, here the USA flag or for Brazil in case of Portuguese, Mexico in case of Spanish language. Here we have these alternatives and we can save the changes and we can go directly to our website and we will have up here the language switcher. So it will change to the language. Of course, I don't speak all of these languages most, but they do are good. They're okay. But unfortunately, here with the free version of G-Translate, we cannot do manual translation. So in case that we want to change some type of word or a minimal change that we want to do, it cannot be done. But in case that you have a small website that you don't actually want to pay for a plugin or for some advanced features, G-Translate, it's a good option. Here as well, as we can see, we have this sample page test from WordPress and we can just be easily changing without any further work about the manual translation. So that's pretty good advantage of using G-Translate for free. 
that it does automatic the, the translation. Now I will deactivate gtranslate and show translate press. So I will just activate and also that's almost the same as gtranslate. We can set out the default language. We're also again translating from German, French, Spanish being the original languages. But in case, just to show he up, he's here on this video. We have default English and I will select Spanish. And we will just add it in case that we want to change the slug. It's really recommended just to leave it as it is. But in case that you want to change it, here is also the opportunity. And here, as well as in the previous example, if you want to show it in the native language or keep it as in the original language. If you want to use a zip directory for the default language, it's also recommended to not use it, to keep the URL structure as it's normal for the original language. But for any translated language, it's recommended just to leave it as it is with the subfolders. Here, if we want to force language, once there are custom links inside the content, so it's directed to the current language that it's already set up. And here on the language switcher, we have the options to add it as a short code. So in case that you are using a page builder such as Elementor or DB, you can add the language switcher as a short code. Here on the menu item, if you want to add it directly from that menu, you, and I will show it here, how to add it directly on that menu. Or as well, here we have the floating language selector. You can also select and do the changes if you only want to show the only flags and the type of how it should look and where it should be shown. And we just save the changes. So also some of the advanced feature of Translate Press in the paid version, if you're aiming for automatic translation, you can connect via Google Translate or Deepl. If you haven't seen any other of my videos, I have talked about Deepl, how really good and accurate translation it has. It's artificial intelligence translation. It's based on this deep machine learning that as time passes and as it keeps improving, the artificial intelligence technology, also the translation do. But that's all part of the paid version of Translate Press. If you're also looking for Deepl translation or automatic translation, as I mentioned, WPML, Weglot, and Convey, these are really good options. So I will go here to Appearance, to Menu. And here we can see now that there's the language switcher options. So if we want to add, let's say the current language and the opposite language, they both will appear. And as well, if we want to add kind of a menu tab for the languages, we can add a custom link. I will set here just a hashtag and I will call it language. And I will go back here to language switcher and add both languages. In these cases, it will only appear the one that it's not already selected. So I will just save menu and go here to the main page. And we can see up here that we have both languages. We have already here Spanish and our original language. Since it's English, the one that it's already selected, as I mentioned, it's it won't appear here, but we will have the one that it can translate to. And also down here, we have the drop down language selection. So I have here this sample page and we have some of the content here. So to translate the page we're with translate press, we can translate here directly. And now we will have this option for the string translations. We can do it visually. We can go here. As you can see here, there's this pencil. And here in the left side, we will have 
the option to write the translation manually. If you see it like this way, if you're looking for a manual WordPress translation, then translate press is the option. But if you're looking to speed up, then this might not be the best option at the beginning, unless that you, of course, you have the paid version and you want to use Tipple, then yes, translate press could also have this connection for the automatic translation. So you will have to go writing one by one. If you want to change it here, you can also select the translation that must be done or can be done. And you will have to save. So as you can see, this might take some time. So I would just translate parts of the page just to show it how it translates. So I will skip this part of the video. Okay, so once you have already translated part of your content, you have here the original language. And once it's selected the language that we're changing to, the translation will appear. But this will take time since it will be manual translation. So if you're looking for that option of manual translation, then translation will, that will be the option. As you can see up here, the URLs log to say that this is a URL, URL in Spanish. It's already set up. But if you want to change or translate the URL log, then you will might need the translate press paid version. And as you, as you can see here, the Spanish is, well, it's not in Spanish. So we can go back here to settings. And here is again to show the native language on the on the proper language. So if we want to do that change, we can go back and you see it here. It's a full name, Español de Mexico. So sometimes it's better just to keep it for these cases to keep it as. Spanish with a flag. There is also the, the option. So these are two free plugins that you can use. One is automatic. The other one is manual. Both are for free. So that's probably the main advantage of using this plugin. So I would recommend these ones if you have a smaller website that you don't really want to pay in the case that you actually don't want to pay for a plugin. These are good options, as I mentioned. The, some, the other alternatives, such as Convey These, Weglot, WPML, they do have paid plans or, or yearly license in the case of the WPML, where you actually have to pay for the services. And also for the WPML automatic translation, you will have to pay for extra credit. So as an alternative, we have G Translate and also Translate Press as really good options for those who are not looking for that kind of plugins. If you have some questions, some comments, please write down. I left some links to these plugins down in the descriptions. Thanks for watching.